In May 1999, India was invaded by Pakistan in a surprise attack in Kargil. Letters from Kargil is the most human and personal portrait of the war ever written. And the author of the book, Tiksha Dwegi, is with us here at the Journal of History. Hi, Tiksha. Hi. So tell me all about how you came to write this book. What, what made it happen? Well, I had, um, I remember this, uh, having this conversation with my mom last, last, last year. And um, this was around Kargil Vijay Devas and she was like, um, Narendra Modi is going for the celebration to Dras uh, on 26th July. And I was like, why are you not going? So um, she was, um, so she said, no, we didn't get an invite. And I said, how is that possible that you did not get an invite? Mm -hmm. um, and it made me angry because how can you not get an invite? So she said that for the 16 years she had not got an invite. Um, uh, 2000 she did. But after that, uh, well, one of the reasons is that it's a very small place and you can't really accommodate 500 families. Mm -hmm. But not even one invite in 16 years was a bit uh, bizarre to me. So I got angry. And, uh, and of course, for so many years I had seen so many heroes' stories coming out. And I never got to hear about my dad and my dad's regiment. And of course, I mean, being his daughter, I had, I had all the uh, stories about them. So I wrote a story um, on my website. and. Uh, it reached a lot of news channels. Mm -hmm. The story was about him, 315 field regiment, which, uh, which was started away the unit that he was uh, part of. And uh, yeah, that's how I wrote that story. And then um, last year, in fact, so after the story, we were invited for the Kargil Vijay Divas last year. Mm -hmm. And now they have a thing, uh, the Indian Army and the government have a thing that they invite uh, soldiers, families on rotational basis. So every year, somebody, some of the families who haven't ever visited will get a chance to yeah. go. So that's where I met lots of journalists and uh, one of them was uh, Priya Raman mm -hmm. and uh, she had read my story and uh, when I was back in Bombay she gave me a call she was like I, I read a couple of excerpts from your dad's letters mm -hmm. on the story and, uh, she, and since he also wrote it means that lots of other soldiers wrote it. Mm -hmm. I said that's yes of course <laughs> a lot of other soldiers wrote it but do you think you can do something mm -hmm. about that? Can you No part of war uh, through the soldiers' eyes because that's what the millennials are missing right now. Mm -hmm. So that's how letters from Kargil came to play. Okay. Um, so how easy or should I say difficult was it to make the soldiers' families talk about their experience again and to put these letters together? In fact, have access to them in the first place. Yes, it was it was extremely difficult. I would say. In fact, um, I would wake up sometimes and I would be like, this won't be possible. Like. Like my dad used to write hundreds of letters uh, mm -hmm. uh, since the time he had been posted to Srinagar. But of course, every soldier doesn't write so many yeah. uh, letters. But uh, but I got the right contacts. I, it, it was possible because of my mom. She has a good community. She talks to lots of uh, martyrs' families. So I I started making calls before I uh, started writing the book. Okay. Right. So it took me a month to make lots of calls and have lots of conversations. And it was easy because I'm a mother's daughter, so I could really feel what they feel, and that is how I talk. So that is the first thing I used to do. I used to call them. I used to say, I'm uh, I'm Major C. B. Devi's daughter, and uh, I'm a writer, and I'm writing this book, and I want I want this book to go into in the history of. Uh, uh, I mean, it should be in the academics uh, of uh, any school or blah blah blah. And of course, I mean, it was it's a very very tough for. Uh, Ever and uh, I don't know uh, why like, the millennials or nobody really knows about it. Like they they don't even know it happened in the 1999s. Mm -hmm. so it's it's, uh, it's a bit weird. So it was very very difficult sometimes. Like, I would just tell the families that if you don't want to talk about it, take your time, mm -hmm. find some letters. So they they worked with me. They literally worked with me. They'll take out the boxes and they'll they'll go through letters. There have been times that somebody cried and they were like. Oh, I don't know how to do this, okay, you read it, I, I'm not reading it. So yeah, it was tough. I mean, there were translations also required, so. But yes, it, it was like living that time again with these families. So it was, it was, it was a tough time, but it was, it was also very enlightening. Did, did you have, did you personally have apprehensions about putting out something so personal to you into the world? Not at all. For so many years I didn't write about it because I had apprehensions, mm -hmm. but, uh, but this book was 
difficult definitely like I would I could not write it sometimes because I would cry and it would like you would break down obviously because there's just because that, there's not one soldier who's talking about there's so many soldiers talking about the same thing yeah. you know talk blind about the beauty of the yeah. place that they're in so it was it was very difficult because you're like you feel a bit helpless at that point saying that shit I can't go back to that time and I give my dad a call and say Hopefully everything will be yeah. okay, which which it won't be. But yes, it was because I think I delayed it a couple of months also because I was like I just it's it's difficult to do work and yeah. do this. So yes, um, putting up the personal story not at all. It wasn't uh, difficult at all. I always I'm I'm so I'm such a proud daughter that I I think everybody should know my story and every soldier's story. And that's the represent uh, that's representing 527 of those soldiers that mm-hmm. who should have been covered. But do you, do you think that it's therapeutic in a way to write about this? About uh, this? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Writing is therapeutic, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, that's that, that's the uh, reason. Uh, uh, I think when you, that's the reason when you tell people to write stories, you get the saddest of stories, you get the personal, uh, the most personal stories because as soon as you put it out, uh, it's out of your system. And um, that makes it real and that makes you accept what you're going through. Yeah. And you get over it. I think after writing it, that it's out of the world and more people can talk about it if you want to. So lastly, what do you think the impact of this book will be? What do you think the readers are going to take back from it? Firstly, I want the millennials to know that there's such a war happened. And uh, because also uh, the Indian army will not be as ill equipped ever again. Uh, such a surprise won't happen again. Uh, so the next time anybody says war is needed, I would just tell them to think twice because uh, when it's a win for the country, it's also a huge loss for many many innocent people. So a war is never won really. It's it's a war that's lost and won or won and lost. So that is what I, I would just say that don't say war is needed because it's it's really not. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.